A year after Rankin discovered x-rays, Henri Becquerel wanted to see if phosphorescent salts of uranium could be made to emit x-rays. And he thought by exposing them to the sun, this would happen. Again, the sun would provide the energy just like the voltage that was applied in the Crookes tubes that accelerated the electrons that hit the anode that then released x-rays. However, Becquerel actually found out that the uranium salts would expose the photographic plates just like the x-rays, but they didn't need the sun. It would work indoors, shielded from the light. What conclusion could you draw from this? Before you answer, or if you've already answered, here's some more help and maybe it'll change your mind. Here's a picture of a photographic plate that was exposed to uranium salts by Becquerel. Once again, like Rankin, a Maltese cross was used, and you can sort of see the outline here. And this Maltese cross was used to shield the plate from the rays. You can clearly see its shadow, where the cross, where the cross blocked the rays. More people started working on this problem, and most famously, Marie Curie and her husband Pierre conducted exhaustive experiments and analyses. Their conclusion was that these rays were coming from the atoms themselves and that the atoms were not indivisible. They were breaking apart and decaying into other atoms, so you had one element turning into another element. This is the real-life version of what alchemists were trying to do hundreds of years earlier. They tried to transform elements into other elements, for example, lead into gold, clearly gold is more valuable, via chemical means. They never could because it just isn't physically possible, but, he, but here the Curies were finding it happening spontaneously in nature. Chemistry is all about sharing and trading electrons at energy levels much less than a newly discovered rays or radiation. This radiation, discovered by Curie and others, had a much, much higher energy. This indicates that they were coming from something deeper in the atom, which was found out in 1911 to be the nucleus. During their research, the Curies discovered new elements, such as radium and polonium as they had found different mineral blends emitted different ray energies. These rays had a much higher energy than Rankin discovered X-rays. And very sadly, prolonged exposure without adequate protection to these substances led to Marie's early death from cancer. Marie was the first woman to be awarded the Nobel Prize. She shared it with her husband Pierre and Henri Becquerel. She was also the only person ever to win the Nobel Prize in two t different technical disciplines, physics and chemistry. She was also the first woman faculty member at the École Normale Supérieure. Subsequent research by Becquerel, Marie Curie, Pierre Curie, Rutherford, Andrade, Royds, and many, many others found that these rays were not all the same. By 1901, three new types of radiation are isolated. One, gamma rays, a type of high energy electromagnetic radiation arising from energy changes in a nucleus, much more energetic than X-rays. Beta particles, these are electrons from beta decay in the nucleus. This was the radiation from the uranium salts that were found by Becquerel. Now you might be thinking right now, where are the electrons coming from? They're out orbiting the nucleus, but we'll cover that later. And also alpha particles, which are just basically helium nuclei. This was just an amazing time for science, and these types of radiation will be discussed further in the nuclear physics chapter.